Hi, this is Brian. I'm the Customer Service Director at Juicer, and I'm going to give you a 10-minute crash course of how to build your first Juicer feed. So at Juicer, when we say feed, we're referring to the wall of social posts that you will ultimately embed on your website to display the social content that you want. And when we say source, we're referring to a social account or a hashtag that you'll insert into the feed. When you first create a feed, you'll be taken to this menu here, which will show you a variety of social networks that you can choose from. Uh, you can also enter an RSS feed source by clicking the blog option. If you choose a social network, you'll be given a few different options. Uh, in most cases, you can enter a user handle. Uh, in some cases, you can enter a hashtag and that will pull in public posts that contain that hashtag. Um, and also in some cases, you can choose a Google Maps ID location for posts tagged with that location. In this case, I'll go ahead and add just an example Facebook page to get us started. And when I enter that, Juicer is going to pull in one batch of posts from that Facebook page. Juicer will not pull in all of the posts for your first source, but rather one batch of posts and the number will depend on the social network. For Facebook and Twitter, it'll be about 50 to 100 posts. For Instagram, it'll be about 33 posts. So it'll vary by social network. In some cases, we can pull through historical posts for you. So you can contact us and we could try to run that process for you. So you'll see we've been taken to the main dashboard for this new juicer feed. On the right here, you'll see the feed exactly as it will appear on your website once you insert the embed code. On the left is the toolbar, and here you can change how your feed appears and make some other customizations, um, and you can manage the sources that appear in your feed. In the upper right corner, uh, you'll see there is a help button that will take you to our help library with a lot of useful articles you can browse. And next to that is the main account menu button. If you click that, it will open a panel uh, that will give you access to your account settings so you can change your login address and password and a few other things. And you can change your payment settings from here as well. If you have a plan that allows you to build multiple feeds, you can also do that from here by clicking the plus icon next to the feed header. And it will take you to that page we were just on a few minutes ago uh, asking you to add your first source. In the upper left corner, you can change the name of your feed by clicking the pencil icon. So I'll just type in example feed here, and this will change that name. This will come into play later in an area that I'll cover in just a few minutes. Now here on the right, if you hover over a post, you can do a few things. You can delete the post, which will remove the post and send it into your moderation area, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Uh, you can also pin post to the top of the feed, just click pin on a post and then refresh your page and it'll bump that post up to the top and then new posts will be cycling in below that going forward. And for some networks, you can edit the post content by clicking edit. You can actually add text and links to the post and it'll show a disclaimer there uh, showing that you edited that content. So then over here on the left hand side, if you click social media sources, you can see we've added our first source here and we can add more. If you click the name of the source here, it'll give you a few more options. You can, in some cases, manually add posts from the network by pasting in the URL. Uh, you can set individual moderation filters for a source. And you can edit the filter button name for that source, which we'll also cover in just a moment. If you no longer want to display posts for a certain source, just click delete and it will remove that source from here and the corresponding posts. We'll add one more source here to kind of mix some other types of posts in with this. Um, I'll add a Twitter hashtag here for the term conference. Now this is going to pull in public posts that contain that hashtag from any users on Twitter that are using that hashtag. And these posts are organized chronologically right now with the newest at the top. So you'll see posts from both sources are appearing. Depending on your plan level, you have a, a limited number of slots available in the social media sources area. On the free plan, you'll have a max of two. On the medium plan, you'll have a max of five. And on the large plan, you'll have a max of 15 sources. You can also add two additional feeds on the large plan. Down below sources, you can see the feed settings panel. This is gonna let you change how the feed appears. There are several pre-built feed styles you can choose from. And this is going to rearrange how the elements appear on the feed so you can get one that fits you just right. Um, if you select the slider option, this is actually going to automatically rotate through your post. 
you can change the timing interval from that in the interval field here to the left. We also have a widget style that'll rotate through posts one at a time. So if you have a limited amount of space on your website, you may wanna consider using that type of an option. You can change the number of columns that appear just by adjusting that number here, or you can set a fixed width and height. You can alter the order of the posts. And in this case, you can actually add filters to the top of the feed that I can mention before. So for example, if I choose social type, then my visitors can filter the posts based on social network. You can do the same thing for the social accounts that you add. So you can filter by the various sources. Down below that is a few additional features. Uh, you can only show posts that contain images or videos. Uh, you can enable and disable the overlays that appear when you click. For example, if I click this, a light box will come up that shows uh, more information about that post. On paid juicer plans, you can use a custom design panel. This will let you change the text color and a few other uh, options there. Uh, the changes will appear in real time and you can save them uh, just by clicking save custom style. If your developers would like to add some custom CSS to change the styling, just click customize CSS. You can paste that in there and that will show that change right away. When you're ready to embed the juicer feed on your website, simply click embed in your site here. You can copy and paste the code that appears here directly into your website's content management system. So you can paste it directly into the code for your page and the juicer feed should appear just as you see it here on the right. If you have a WordPress website, you can also use our WordPress plugin. And then we have an iframe version as well in case the standard version isn't working well within your uh, particular CMS. You will want to use the standard website version if you can. It'll keep the mobile responsive design and a few other features. Another feature of our paid plans and one week on our free plan is the moderate and filter panel here. This will let you automatically or manually filter the content that's appearing so only what you want is shown. If you're running a hashtag campaign, you may want to send everything directly into moderation so you must manually approve anything for it to appear. Uh, you can do that with the send all post to moderation feature here. Just click that and that'll send all post into moderation. Or you can automate the filtering by entering terms into the disallow or only allow fields here. We also have a comprehensive profanity blocker that's built right in. You can enable with this checkbox. And if you're cross posting the same content across multiple uh, social channels, you wanna enable that duplicate post blocker as well. Now, if you block or delete posts, like I'll move a few example posts over now. If you click the moderated post tab here, you can actually see those posts that you've removed. Or if posts are automatically being sent into your moderation, this is where you would access them. And so from here, you can click approve on them to send them back into the feed. So this is where you would be working from if you enable that send all post to moderation feature. And always make sure you save your filters here and you can apply that to everything in your feed right now or only to future posts going forward. If you are displaying Juicer within a lobby setting or at a live event, you can copy and paste this link here into a browser and it will actually display your feed full screen without needing to embed it into a website. Finally, Juicer will not update your posts in real time as new posts are made. Uh, it'll update them at a set update frequency that depends on your plan level. On the free plan, it's once every day at the same time. On a medium plan, it's every hour. And on our large plan, it's once every 10 minutes. You can see when the feed last synced right here at the bottom panel. And if you click it, it'll show you the next estimated time for when it will resync again and display the latest posts from your sources. Um, real quickly, if you go back to your account settings here in the upper right and click the connected social accounts tab here, there are some social accounts that might need to be connected on the back end of your account. These are for administrative purposes and help us obtain posts on your behalf. They give us additional permissions. So our software may prompt you to enter social accounts here as well. Juicer will not do anything with those accounts except for obtain posts on your behalf. Thanks very much for watching this video. We'll post a few links in the description uh, that will contain some useful resources. You can always contact us in the lower right corner of your screen. Just click the bubble here and our intercom platform. You can leave a message and somebody will follow up with you soon. Or you can type in an answer or a question here and it'll take you to a corresponding answer in our help center. So thanks very much for signing up.